Welcome back to another video. This week I wanted to show you guys how to make your own sunscreen lotion. So in order to make your own sunscreen lotion, you definitely need to be using the right zinc. So this is for lotions, water soluble, you need a water soluble zinc. So what I use is the Z-Coat water soluble zinc oxide. And the reason why you use it is that it dissolves completely in a water solution. Otherwise, if you use the regular zinc oxide, it will be clumpy, it won't dissolve readily, and then you'll be left with gaps in your protection, which is not what you want when you want to put sunscreen on. So that is basically it. It is a lot more expensive, the Z-Coat Zinc. It's eight times the price, so that's why mineral-based sunscreens are more expensive. It's just, I don't know why it's so much more expensive, but it is what it is. So we will get started right now. So when you're making a sunscreen lotion, you will need a candy thermometer. And the best ones to buy are the glass ones and make sure that it comes with a plastic tube so it doesn't break. I find that the metal one here wasn't very accurate and we will need a mixing device and two heat safe measuring cups, preferably on the lighter side. And we will be using Z-Coat water soluble zinc oxide and here is the new scale that I bought off of Amazon it goes to the third decimal which is really important when you're making a lotion because you'll need to put a preservative in there and you'll need it to go to the third decimal because when you're adding a preservative you're using a very tiny amount and so here is the third decimal and for rubbing alcohol you just need to disinfect everything that comes into contact with the lotion the forks of the blender the candy thermometer, the measuring cups themselves, anything that touches the lotions, the spoons. Yeah, and here I'm just using a four ounce lotion container and I am reusing this one. So what I have done here is I just cleaned it out with rubbing alcohol and dried it out. So we're gonna tear the scale to zero and here we'll be adding coconut oil. And the coconut oil we're adding at 0 0.36 ounces. And tear the scale to zero. And we will be adding the sunflower oil. And here I'm adding 0 0.15 ounces. And I'm going to tear the scale back to zero. And here is the cocoa butter that I use. And it is a food grade, so you can actually make chocolate with it. And I'm adding 0 0.05 ounces of cocoa butter. Tear the scale back to zero. And here we'll be adding the emulsifying wax and I'm adding 0 0.175 ounces. And this just helps to ensure that the water and the oils don't separate. And so now I'm gonna add this to the hot bath. And you need to use distilled water or you could use like an aloe vera liquid extract, but you just have to use distilled water to ensure no bacteria growth. And I will be using 2.45 ounces. And at this point I'm adding that to the hot bath and I'm only using one thermometer, so I'm just using one big hot bath. And what you want to do here is you want to put it on a medium heat and keep it to 70 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. It helps to ensure emulsification, helps melt all the oils, and helps to reduce contamination. So now I'm adding the water to the oil. You could do either or, but it's just easier to add water. And now I'm going to mix for a good two minutes and then I will turn it off. And at some point, you just have to check your preservative. With the GeoGuard ECT, you add the preservative in at 45 degrees Celsius. So I'm tearing the scale to zero here, and I'm going to be adding 0 0.038 ounces. And I will check the temperature, it's 45, so that's good. And then I'm adding that in, and I will stir it up. And I'll just blend it up for a little longer. So now I'm gonna tear the scale back to zero and add the zinc. So I'm adding the zinc at 0 0.637 ounces. And you definitely want to be covering your mouth for this part of the lotion. Uh, you don't wanna be inhaling zinc at all. It's not good for your lungs. And I'll mix it up a little longer. And when I do add the zinc, I cover my face with a cloth and when I pour it in, I don't just blend right away. I use a spoon and I sort of get all the zinc kind of combined in there so it's not like one big plume of zinc flying into my face. 
at this point. I think it's good enough. And I will be stirring it for another one minute or so. And with the Z-Coat Zinc, it's really good. It dissolves really easily. You don't have to worry about gaps in the lotion in the protection factor. So definitely make sure that you're buying the right zinc. It is eight times the price, but it's worth it. You wanna be safe out there. And here I'm using a really not a great method, but it's a piping bag, a Ziploc bag, and I cut the corner. But I think in the future, I'm going to be finding a silicone bag that I can reuse. I'm also sanitizing the scissors and then I just cut the corner off and I squeeze it into my container of choice. So this container has been sanitized because it was used already and the product fills like a three and a half ounce. So it is a smaller batch. You don't have to worry about making this huge batch and if it's not something that you like. So it's small enough to try it out and I hope you guys enjoy. So I used 20% zinc Z-coat in here. And so that would make it around 40 SPF, so you don't need to use that much zinc if you don't want to. The general guideline is you want it to be above 15 SPF, and yeah, so this is 40. So, and it is, so I've made different lotions and sunscreens before, and this particular batch is unique. So I don't know if it's like, um the best or maybe it is the best I don't know so maybe in the future I'd like to do send it off when I you know finances aren't so tight I'd like to maybe send off some of the sunscreens that I have made and see how they rate so this is different I definitely don't think it would be really suitable for your body because when you rub it on the greasiness it doesn't stay greasy so it 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 just it's a non-greasy formula so it doesn't rub as much as you would normally see in like a, a body lotion so perfect for kind of your face and so it wouldn't it just doesn't leave a greasy residue which is really nice but on the flip side I don't know if because it is kind of like a mousse like lotion and it doesn't leave a greasy residue I don't know if that would make it wear less so it wouldn't stay on as long I don't know so I have worn it and it does seem to be staying on it does stay on through I went to the beach and had it on one of my arms and it seemed to stay on pretty well in the future I would like to send this off to a lab and see how it rates so yeah that is pretty much it and I will try the sunscreen on now and like I said it's probably better as a face lotion face sunscreen kind of goes on like a mousse so lots of and so the reason why it's kind of moussey is because um, there's not as much oil in it so I think it was around like 77 percent water and like 23 percent oil something like that so if you wanted to adjust the recipe you would just add more oil and then from there you would just increase your preservative just a tad bit to compensate for you are increasing okay so let's see what's going for it go on one half <laughs> so it actually for a, like a 40 it would absorb pretty well well it absorbs well but um it doesn't really leave the whitest residue and I feel like you could probably apply your makeup on top of this but you know don't quote me because I am not a scientist um yeah so you can see it's definitely whiter but it literally like the it just kind of fades away and it doesn't leave this like greasy this which I like but again is it appropriate for sunscreens are sunscreens supposed to be greasy I don't know so if you guys know the answers to this um, and I know some of you would never do it yourself sunscreens and that is okay I like to experiment and I hope that you guys understand that you know it is definitely a safe or -er zinc to use in your sunscreens you can't just use your regular zinc so just remember that because it won't 
dissolve readily in your lotion and therefore it would leave like little gaps of protection so that's not what you want so yeah there we go so i've sort of left that side out of the equation and i do look quite white um but yeah i hope you guys enjoy the recipe let me know what you think should a sunscreen be overly oily oily or should it absorb really well and then leave like no oily residue i don't know so I'm curious to know your thoughts i sort of show you here so that's why i wouldn't necessarily use it on my body because it wouldn't really go as far right whereas your face is like mm, you don't have much hair to worry about it just sort of like eh, eh, eh. Right? So yeah, interesting. I will be experimenting with other lotions in the future here. I now have my new scale which goes to the third decimal. So when you are making a sunscreen lotion or any lotion, you do have to use a preservative. So I use a GeoGuard ECT preservative and that is a more natural preservative. But with any preservative, you're using small quantities. So you need a scale that goes to the third decimal. So I will link the one that I bought from Amazon. It had really good reviews, so it's new for me, but I will link it there so you could check it out. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Okay, have a good day. Bye.